know, the sun is what we express outward. The sun is very oriented towards individual self-expression. The moon is oriented towards connection with others. Both of them are family oriented. The sun is family oriented because of the power it gives us because of the sense of sacrifice. This is another big thing with the sun, the sense of sacrifice. For instance, it's related to the father, the moon's related to the mother. The father, if it's the sacrifice of the son, then it's a dignified sacrifice where the father willingly sacrifices his own happiness to provide for the family, just like the sun in the sky. Willingly gives all his power so that everything can live and flourish. If it's the sacrifice, the other sacrifice, the planet is Saturn, that's what I said, the sun and Saturn are very similar. Saturn is not so happy about sacrifice. He feels pushed down, he feels like, he feels humiliated, and this is other kind of sacrifice and determination, but he's determined to keep doing it because he wants to avoid shame and difficulty, embarrassment, or he's just afraid. If I don't keep doing it, I won't have any money or I'll die. Sun and Saturn are both very much about sacrifice, commitment, but for different reasons. The sun is because it's, the great, it's a great thing to do to provide for my family. I feel good about it. I feel this dignified purpose. So powerful sons and the people will share that often. They'll be in harmony with what that is. And the moon is about connection because it makes me feel good. Again, the sun and moon are very related because it makes me feel good. For instance, many times you'll see a woman with a powerful son will be a great mother. Because you take the son principle of self-sacrifice and power and, digni and dignity and put it in a woman, and it's going to make her that way as a mother. You see? And, you know, powerful moon as a father, then the father will be like the one who's all lovey-dovey. So these things are very interesting how they work. Sun and moon are really like, are really like parents. And actually, our relationships, it was said that men are from Mars, women are from Venus. This is Western, Western paradigm. Mars, women are from Venus. The Vedic paradigm is men are from the sun, women are from the moon. Because the Mars-Venus relationship of princess and warrior, sex, sexual attractiveness and expression graduates to the divine parents of the sun and the moon. Not just, but you literally see the evolution of Mars Venus to sun moon, or you could say knight and princess to king and queen. It's, be, it's great for, it's better for longevity when you see sun and moon oriented better than Mars Venus. Mars Venus makes hot lovers, sun moon makes wife and husband, because they, they share these longer, more enduring things. Sun and moon are the big lights. So in relationships, you see that. Mars in relationships is probably the most disruptive planet in a relation for relationships. Because Mars is, is, Mars is a, he's not a family man. In the scriptures, Mars is a, is a, is a yogi. Mars is like the independent yogi, or, he's, or the warrior. Mars connection is often aggressive. It's about my individual power and strength right now. It's not about compromise. It's very, it's opposite Venus. And you see it because Mars rules the signs opposite Venus. Again, look at the, look at the video I did on each one of the ascendants. I talk about this a lot. Mars is opposite Venus, which is the one, the active planet of compromise, of wanting to create a harmonious interaction. Mars is like, screw that, it's about me. And it's the part of you that's like that, that needs to act with individual will, have the courage to destroy that which makes you weak. That's what Mars is about. And relationships are pretty much opposite that whole thing. That's why Mars is quite disruptive. It's, it's about power, strength. I should say personal power, but I always spell, I always do that, strength. Mars is like Mars is like the yogi. Literally the yogi who is like I feel strong and powerful when I'm when I don't need this kind of weakness of a relationship. So what well, but when the couple has a strong Mars when it's strong and there's a thing called kuja dosha which we'll talk about put that up here. Kuja is the name of Mars. Dosha means imbalance. 
And again, it's another way where they assess when the woman is, has the higher masculine nature, when the woman has the more aggressive temperament. So you see all over the place where it's preferred that the woman be in the receptive role. Kuja dosha is a big one. When the woman, it means Mars in balance. If the woman has a more powerful Mars nature, it's, it can be difficult unless the man also has the same. So it's because it's that individuality that says, I don't want to compromise. I've compromised enough. This is, I ain't, I'm, this is a no compromise zone right here. And this is the art of war, you know, Mars brings, Mars, it's up to him to establish the boundary where this is too far, and we all have it. And it comes out in relationship, because with Venus, we compromise too much often. And then Mars has to come in and like, <coughs> say, that's, too, that's enough, too far. And we don't want to do it, because relationship, we're trying to activate the Venus principle. Again, we're trying, we're, the soul is learning to compromise. The soul is learning to honor another's wishes equal to our own, and the beauty in that, how good that feels. Because I love this person so much, and I... And a lot of it is the hook of our desires, but I feel better when I, I, I can please them equal to how I can please myself. So we tend to give in too much because we want to feel that connection. Mars says that's enough. And so it's where our personal power and strength comes to reestablish our own identity. Mercury in relationships, of course, he's the communicator and it's big. Communication humor. This is a really important quality in relationships. I should say, I, I don't think I finished. One thing about Mars, let me just, is when Mars is powerful, like let's say it's, it's a powerful Mars combination, then the people can actually have some healthy disagreements, healthy fights, have a healthy individuality. It's one of the hardest ones though to, to really match. You, in general, you don't like to see Mars in sinistry to anything. Nothing. I mean, Mars Venus is a strong sexual glue. Mars Moon, you don't like to see Mars Sun, Mars anything else is aggravating. Mars Venus, because Mars and Venus will activate a, 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 a lot of sexual power, a lot of attraction, and that's a strong glue. But it can often be the glue. That can be the thing. Here's what we do. We get together and do that Mars Venus thing. But then what? If that can be a part of it, that's the button that gets pushed. So, but when that button gets pushed, there's that that happens. There's a strong sexual bond, especially if it's man, Mars, woman, Venus. But then after that, there's not agreement. Venus wants more of that soft stuff. After Mars does the thing, he's like, okay, now I'm individual again. And it's just like this, it, unless there's other things. I mean, there could be other things. If there's a strong sun, moon, if there's other things that modify it, that might not be all there is, because you'll see it with a lot of couples. And you hope that there's other things that makes it so that it's not just that kind of bond. But I mean, Mars Moon, any of the nodes, Mars Mercury, Mars is disruptive and individual in general. Again, sometimes though that, that works. Like let's say someone's Leo and the other person's got Mars in Leo in their first house. You know, they could very well you know, handle that and be excited and not be threatened by it. So everything has its place. I'm speaking in general terms just so you get an idea of what these energies are. So as we said, mercury, communication, humor, big stuff. We tend to take things so seriously. Discrimination. I don't know room for that. Discrimination. Funny how my arm just keeps getting longer. <laughs> Big things. We take ourselves so seriously. We take the thing so seriously. Mercury connection, and it's like, come on, let's just let's just relax. It's okay. Let's talk about it. There's accommodation. Mercury's very helpful. When there's a good Mercury connection, people will be able to communicate. 